would take a quick look at the file storage service and some of its uh, workings in action. My name is Rohit Rahi and I'm part of the Oracle Cloud Infrastructure team. So let me first show you the setup for the demo. So as you can see here, uh, we are uh, going to use a VCN with this particular address space. And uh, we are going to run this in a US East, which is a multi AD region, but I'm just going to use a single AD. Uh, I could have used multiple ADs, but I'm just going to, uh, it's a demo, going to use a single AD here. Uh, in this particular VCN, I'm going to create a public subnet and a private subnet. And you can see some of the address spaces here. And of course, as we talked in the virtual cloud network uh, module, uh, the private subnet will, will have its own route table and security list. And the public subnet will have its own route table and security list, right? That's a good best practice to do that. Uh, the public subnet, as you would have guessed by now, would have an internet uh, gateway, uh, so we could access it uh, uh, via the internet. And the reason I'm I'm going to do that is I'm going to spin up a couple of instances and I'm going to SSH into them. Uh, now there is no requirement to do that in real life situations. You could run all of this in a private subnet and still access those uh, clients uh, using Bastion host or something, right? So you absolutely don't have to uh, just follow this. Uh, this demo in a in a real life situation. It's a demo. I'm just going to show you something quickly. So I'm just uh, having this set up. Now this is where I'm going to run my mount target and my file system uh, here uh, on the private subnet. So it's all secure. It's it's private. And then in the public subnet, I'm going to run two clients. These are NFS clients where uh, which will access this particular uh, file system here to the mount target. And what I'm going to show you in the demo is the client one would would uh, has read write access and of course client two also has read write access both of them would make changes and of course either of them uh, and uh, this is, will show you a quick a quick uh, example of a shared file system uh, where data is managed as a file hierarchy right and both clients can read and write uh, to the same file system uh, and uh, access it and, and manage it right so with that let me quickly jump to the uh, console and start uh, the, the the demo. So right now I'm in the console. We have been using this uh, OCI console for some of the lecture series. We have this burger menu here. If I click on that, I can see uh, links for various services. Right here is the file storage uh, service. So we're going to use that. You can see I'm in US East. We could have used another region as well. So if I click on file storage, first thing you see here is there is no file system here. I can click file system and create one. There is a mount target, and again, there is no mount target here, right? So if I just click on create file system, it creates a file system, uh, it creates a mount target, uh, and so on and so forth, right? And it picks up a VCN here. Now, this is the VCN we were using in our VCN module and the compute module. I don't want to use the same VCN, right? I want to, like I showed you in, on the slide, I want to have a new VCN, which I'm going to use, right? So let me just cancel this. And first thing, let me go and create a virtual cloud network really quickly. So uh, this, uh, because I'm doing a uh, file storage service uh, demo, so uh, I will call this FSS VCN. And I'm going to pick the address space which I had in my uh, uh, slide, 1016, uh, and I'll click, I'll click create VCN. Now the VCN is created. There is no internet gateway. There is no subnet, etc. right? So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a mount target subnet. Uh, regional is fine. I could have done AD specific as well. Uh, it doesn't matter because I'm just going to use one uh, AD 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Uh, this is my, uh, this is the address space I, on this, I had on the slide. And I'm going to make this a private subnet, right? Because I want, uh, I don't want uh, this to be exposed to the internet. Uh, it is my mount target, my file system. I want to keep them secure. Uh, I will choose the default route table. And I'll choose the default security list and I'll change this uh, subsequently uh, because now we can edit them. Uh, if we have a new one created, we could have used that here or we could edit it later on. So I create, let me just make sure it's a private subnet. Yep. Let me create this uh, subnet here, right? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create um, another subnet for the clients. I'm calling it. Um, compute subnet. And this is where my uh, compute instances would be running, right? 
So this is the address space which I had on the slide and I'm going to make it a public subnet, right? And I'm again choosing the default tables, but we'll change that, right? So I'll choose the default security list and the default route table, right? And this is a public subnet, okay, got it. So create my compute subnet, right? So we have the compute subnet, we have the mount target subnet. First thing first, let me just go ahead and create a private route table here because I don't want uh, my mount target and file system to be exposed uh, through uh, the default route table where I'm going to have a uh, route going to the internet gateway. So I created a pri private uh, route table and let me just go ahead and create a private security list. Right, pretty straightforward. Now what I'm going to do is I'm also going to create an internet gateway and add a route in the route table for the internet gateway. These are things again you would have seen in the virtual cloud network uh, module. So nothing uh, uh, complex here. This is basically the, the, the basic steps in order for me to SSH into an instance running in a public subnet, right? So I do this here. And then last thing, let me go into my VCN and change my mount target subnet to use the private subnet here, private security list here, and also change my route table to use the to use the the, the private route table. So mount target edit is just a security list here. The the console keeps changing so I think it's right here. So if you click edit here, now here you can see I will choose my private route table, right? So really straightforward. Now we have mount target subnet, which has its own route table and its security list. And we have the compute subnet, which has its own, uh, which has its own route table and security list, right? So the basics are done now. So let me go to my file storage and create a file system here, right? So I can just come here and create a file system now, right? Pretty straightforward. Uh, but I want to show you how we talked about this in in the on, on the in, in the previous module. So first, let me create a mount target, and uh, this we are doing a demo. So it's a mount target demo. Uh, it's mount target and uh, and the file system are AD specific, so it's picking up AD one. Uh, I could have chosen another AD. That's fine. My subnet is regional. I could have done that, but AD one is fine. And right here, I'll pick the the VCN we just created FSS VCN right and now for the subnet I don't want the compute subnet I want the mount target subnet right because it's private uh, and that's where I'm going to uh, create my create my uh, uh, mount target now there are some advanced options here I could provide an IP address private IP address host name probably I'm just going to leave them blank uh, and have them uh, the system populate that automatically right so as I create the mount target you would see that first thing I see I want to see here is that I get a private IP address. Remember, the way we identify a mount target is by that IP address. And that IP address along with the export path is the way we expose a file system uh, to the clients, right? So that's how it works. So right now you can see I got 10.0.1.3 and this is in the address space of 10.0.1.0 slash 24. Uh, as you recall, the first three IP addresses uh, cannot be used, right? So the first one, dot uh, zero is reserved uh, and uh, reserved for, you know, you cannot, that's your network address. And then the first two IPs and the last IP in a in a VCN gets gets reserved, right? So I cannot use those, but I could use the 10.0.1.3 right here. So uh, right now, if I go into, I can see my mount target is running. Now, if I, if I can create a file system here. So um, let me, so when I click on file system, it's one click thing, right? I can just create here and it will create my, my file system, but I don't want to just use the default names. Let me call this file system demo. AD1 is fine. I could use Oracle manage keys for server side encryption, or I could use, uh, I could, uh, I could bring in my own keys. I'm just going to let Oracle use the Oracle manage keys. And right here uh, is the export path. Now remember export path is how the file systems are uh, exposed 
uh, in a given mount target to the clients. This is how how you how you expose them. So through this through this path here, export path. Uh, I could choose another name or something, right? Uh, but never use just uh, just a root here, right? Because then if you use the root, you cannot have another path uh, on on the same. Uh, file system, right? Because it, the, the the path systems have to be mutually exclusive. So that don't do that. But other than that, any uh, path is fine. And then right here, you can see I it it shows the mount target uh, demo uh, uh, mount target we have because we have the only one mount target. If I wanted to create one more, I could just come here and create a new mount target. I could have done that because you know I have already this mount target running. So I'm just going to use that. So with that, let me just click create here, and now my uh, file system would be created right uh, and export path is there so so now i could just click on mount commands here and i get the commands to use with my instances in order to mount uh, this uh, file system to my local uh, to my uh, clients to my compute instances and using that now i can access the file system right so it's rather straightforward um, way where you, we are managing all the complexities behind the scene and you get a file system uh, service highly available running in the cloud right so pretty pretty um, amazing that way now a couple of things to keep in mind uh, let me go back to my mount target we did this uh, but one thing which i want to uh, to talk about is if you click here you can see that before we can mount a file system we must configure security list rules to allow traffic to the mount target subnet uh, if we don't do that, then your clients would not be able to, to access the mount target and hence the file system. Now, which ports do we need to open? We need to open stateful ingress, TCP ports 111, uh, 2048 to 2050, and UDP ports uh, 111 and 2048. Uh, and we need to do that for stateful ingress. And we also need to open certain ports for stateful egress. Now, you might say, why are we doing ingress and egress? Because didn't we say that uh, you know when ingress basically you uh, it's stateful so if for a for a for a uh, packet coming in you automatically guarantee the packet going out yes we do that the reason we do this is this concept around the TCP connections to survive the reboots now remember we talked about the fact that uh, uh, the, the the mount target is highly available so if I go back to my slide uh, if you see this mount target so if the mount target here is highly available right so what happens is if your clients are connecting through this right so let's say this is a client of course the response is going to go back but what happens is because it's highly available sometimes your mount target has to be moved to another machine in case this underlying server has a problem right or it has a reboot or something right so in case this one moves here your packets which are coming from from this suppose the packets were coming in flight now packets have to go out from here now the packets have no way to figure out how to go out because the the source uh, the the place where they were running is now different it's not a different server so that's why we say egress here and we say source is is the port here whatever the port was uh, let's say 111 so that way we guarantee that for tcp connections uh, in flight they can survive the reboot uh, TCP connections coming from the clan. So that's why we have both egress, uh, ingress and egress. So let's go ahead and quickly uh, do this. So we go to the mount target subnet. Mount target subnet has its own security list. So let me just go to the private security list and you can see that right now it has no ingress or egress, right? Because we just created this uh, uh, a while back. So I could have done this right now. I could have picked the cider for my uh, public subnet here. 10.0.2.0/24, but I'm just going to do it for the whole subnet, uh, for the whole VCN. Uh, the reason being, if there are other subnets, they could just use this uh, the, the security list. Otherwise, I'll have to go it and open uh, for each individual subnet if I have more than one. So, again, just a demo. Uh, you could have in real life, you would go and open the mount target subnet for specific uh, instances and the subnets where they are where they are running, right? So TCP um, source can be anything. Destination has to be 2048 to 2050. I'll, I'll add another rule. Uh, same cider here. TCP has to be 111. I'll open another one here. 
TCP and the, uh, this is UDP and the port has to be 111 and another one and it's UDP again and the port has to be 2048 so let me make sure I have all the ports so IP is fine the VCN uh, CIDR TCP 2048 to 2050 uh, TCP 111 uh, port is fine destination UDP 111 and UDP 2048 right so this is my ingress rules now I also need to do egress otherwise what we just talked about is, is not going to happen right so I TCP and now my source port is the ports we talked about right so 2048 to 2050 uh, we need to add another one uh, source is sorry source is TCP source is 111 and the third one source uh, it's UDP and the source is 111 right all right so egress rules uh, TCP 2040 2050 uh, TCP 11 111 and then uh, UDP uh, 111 right so we add these egress rules, right? So now my, my rules are all done here. Now, if I go back to my security list, and uh, if I talk about the other security list I had, the default security list, that is still allowing uh, SSH, and uh, that's that port 22, so I can SSH into that, and that's pretty much it, right? So that's fine, because I'm using that to uh, as as part of my public subnet so now last thing i need to do my mount target is done is created my file system is created now i need to test it out right so let me create a couple of instances really quickly and uh, so i can test out my uh, file system and mount target right so i'll say fss1 oracle linux is fine uh, the, uh, virtual machine shape is fine uh, right now i see that fss vcn and I'll compute subnet is chosen here. I can I'll assign a public IP because I want to use it. I'm running Windows subsystem for Linux. So uh, let me just get my public key. Or I say public private key here. It's running. Let me just copy the public portion of the key, paste it here. All right, and then click create, uh, <clears throat> and then let me just do that for one more instance. So these these become my two uh, compute instances, which I'm going to use uh, to connect to my uh, uh, file system and mount target and run my demo. So FSS2 virtual machine is fine. Uh, it compute subnet is fine. Assign a public IP address, and right here I can paste my SSH keys. Do that and click create. And you would see that uh, these instances would be up and running uh, in, in, in a few seconds. Uh, unfortunately, I missed a, a supplying a public IP here. We'll solve that. We'll go into the uh, we'll go into the, um, the VNIC and we'll assign a public IP there. It takes literally a few seconds to do that. So let's see if the instance is up and running. It's still coming up. Let me go back to my file system and let me make sure that the ports are all correctly open so if i click on mount target click here click on this so stateful ingress tcp yes we opened those udp 111 stateful egress now the source port is 111 udp source port 11 111 all right all right so the ports are all open let's see if one of the compute instances is up and running still getting provisioned all right looks like the compute instances are running so let me just copy the public IP address clear the screen now it's Oracle Linux so the username is OPC and let me SSH into the first instance all right so uh, right now I'm in the instance and I could go and I could access the file system and I'll, I'll do the same thing for the other instance as well. 
So right here, if I click on file storage, uh, file systems, and click on the export path, remember export path is how you uh, uh, expose a file system to uh, uh, file system to your clients. So right now I need to run some NFS utility. I'm in Oracle Linux. If you were using something else like Ubuntu uh, or Windows Server, you would have a different set of commands. Just follow those those commands. So it looks like it's done. Let me just clear the screen. Let me just create a local mount point. Pretty straightforward. And right here, I'm going to to mount the file system. And bingo, that there, that's there we go. Right. So now if I cd into my into my local mount point. Right now I can see there is no file here, right? So I could go ahead and create a file. I am from FSS1. And I could save this file, right? It's as simple as that. Now I'm actually writing this file in the local file system. The other instance we had, uh, let's go ahead and do the same, run the same instructions on the other instance the issue is the other instance we forgot to assign a public ip address here right so you can see oh, oh actually we have a public ip sorry i thought for some reason we didn't have so it's actually then really straightforward let me go to the other instance just log into the other instance ssh and right here let me just go back to my file system and run those commands again Create a local mount point. And then I'll mount the file system to that local mount point. Okay, really straightforward. Now if I come and uh, CD to that local mount point and run a, a ls command, I can see this file is existing, right? And if I do a cat, I can see that the file has this content which we just wrote uh, earlier. So if I want to open this file and let's say now I want to change it. Uh, sorry. Let's save this file. And now if I go back to my first instance and do a cat, there you go. I can see that the changes appear here, right? So very quickly, what this showed you uh, are two instances running uh, in the same subnet, right? We could have chosen different subnets. That's fine. But literally, you have two subnets running here, uh, two, insta two inst instances running here. Uh, and these instances are accessing this common file system. And they are reading, writing to the, to the file system. I can control the kind of access these have. Uh, and I could create another file. I could create second file system here. Uh, I could create uh, a third file system here and, and so on and so forth, right? So hopefully this gives you a quick uh, overview of how, how the file storage system works. It's a highly available uh, file system in the cloud, uh, massive with massive capacity, it's scalable, elastic, uh, and it's really, really simple to use. Thank you for watching this demo. In the next module, we'll talk about FSS security. Thank